So remember, we were going to use this Clifford algebra to do all our calculations. Algebra. CL 0, 3, 1, and then we take we took the events of algebra. So it's an eight-dimensional. Eight and we had those, you know, we had the E, the you know, the unit one, E one two, E one three, E uh, two three, and E one two three four, right? That was the, the and then oh, and then E four one, E four two, E four three. Those were all, all our you know kind of basis elements. And remember, we use those units which were just, you know, just renaming the units. With just these four units, we were able to uh, give names to all eight bases, well, this plus the one, uh, of this algebra. And then a general element, Q, it was Q0 plus Q. Q1i plus Q2j plus Q3k plus Q4 epsilon i, Q5 epsilon j, Q6 epsilon k, Q7 <coughs> epsilon. Okay. And then we organize, we arrange this in different ways, which would maybe easier for operating. You can put this as first one, the ones that don't have i, j, k, and then the rest. So you can say q0 plus epsilon q7 plus. And I'm just putting this parenthesis to distinguish the scalar from the vector. And then we had q1 i plus q2 j plus Q3K plus Epsilon Q4I plus Q5J plus Q6K. This will be another way of organizing this. It will be the scalar and the, the dual scalar and the dual vector. Or we can organize them as a quaternion and as a dual quaternion, right? Let me just put all of them. <laughs> Q0 plus Q1i, Q2j plus Q3k plus epsilon, Q7 plus Q4i plus Q5j plus Q6k. Okay. The order doesn't matter too much if you have the unit attached to it. When we don't have the units, then we need to know, you know, that this order corresponds to a certain order of the units. This is the general element. Now we said, we said, depending on, you know, how these values of these coefficients are, we may be able to express geometric entities, points, lines, even planes, or we may be able to express in the same algebra elements of the group of displacements. Rotation, translations, general displacements. So now that's what we are going to look at. We are going to look at the geometry uh, and the motion group within this Clifford algebra. Okay? Let's start with the geometry because it's a little bit simpler. Geometry. A line, A line, is what we call a pure dual quaternion or a vector dual quaternion is L equal to, I want just to put L instead, what happens is the scalar becomes zero and then we have the Pluger coordinates of the line direction plus epsilon moment, okay? So L will be uh, L1i plus L2j plus L3k 
plus epsilon L for I plus L five J plus L six K and if we want mm, too many parentheses if we want we can certainly put this as L1 L2 L3 remember we wrote the scalar down here 0 plus epsilon L4 L5 L6 0 this that geometrically we interpret as a line is what is called a pure dual quaternion a pure dual remember that the elements of this algebra we also can call them dual quaternions because it's like two quaternions separated by the dual unit or vector dual quaternion dual quaternion so it's really easy to see lines within our algebra you can even think of, of the geometric interpretation if you think of uh, uh, the fourth unit is the E4 is the one that locates your 3D space at in, in your uh, fourth axis so this over here you know the line direction lives on the I mean I'm not sure we want to do that but remember what these units are right so for instance the I was E23 right J was E31 K was E12 E1, E2, E3 and then the fourth dimension okay E4 and then remember what we do with projective geometries we take this E1, E2, E3 and we locate it somewhere along E4 so this IJK if you want uh, these are planes in fact because we are talking about the, the even subalgebra right so if you want you can identify E12 with E3 remember E12 is this unit of area we can identify it with E3 with K E23 we can identify with I direction and so on so you can think that uh, this part over here lives in the in the space of the directions that don't you know the rays that don't hit the plane at E4 equal 1 or E4 equal any value so E4 is equal to 0 here that's this part over here is the direction and then we have the other unit for instance e, epsilon i was E4 E1 right we calculated that last time epsilon j was equal to E4 2 epsilon k was E4 3 so this actually live here okay and this is okay because this is the moment, this is the location of the line. You know, you shoot a line, you know, the direction will live in here, the location will have to be in the space, you know, where we locate the points. So E41, let me see, will be this one, right? E42 and E43, right? So they have a component of E4. So this is a line. Other entities, of course, given a line, a direction, just a direction vector, if that's all you care about, it's very easy. It's just making the moment equal zero. A direction is a line passing through the origin. And where all directions are vectors through the origin. So a direction V can be expressed in the dual quaternion algebra as I'm just going to put this notation now V1, V2, V3, 0 plus epsilon 0, 0, 0, 0 So it's A line through the origin Th 
ಹೆಸರು ಆರಿಜಿನ್ So if, if you want, let, let me just put it in the other, in the other notation. Uh, and I'm going to call it big V because when, when we are talking about an element of the dual quaternion algebra will be just V. And that will be V1i plus V2j plus V3k, as you can expect. What other entities are we interested, may we be interested in? For instance, a point. A direction has to live down here. It doesn't have to have E4 component, right? A point has to live up here. Remember that points, if we look at the analogy with the projective plane that we locate here, points are intersections of lines through the origin with the plane at those are points, right? So points have to have component in the third, you know, in the third axis in the plane or in the fourth a vector in, in the four, in the three dimensional space. So a point P in the dual quaternion algebra is like this. It doesn't have the direction here, zero 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 one, that's the E4 plus epsilon P1 P2 P3 0. Or if you want in the other coordinates, it will be 1 plus epsilon P1i plus P2j plus P3k, a plane. H. A plane has the following H1, H2, H3, 0 plus epsilon 0, 0, 0, H7. Let me tell you what this is. Let's take our 3D space. If you have a plane here, okay? So the h will be the perpendicular vector. You can think of it as the perpendicular vector, or alternatively, you can think of this as the plane created with the linear combination of your three unit planes. You know, it will give you the same result. You know, the vector will be when you, you know, identify the unit plane with the perpendicular component. It will give you the same linear combination, right? So this vector will be little h. Okay. And then this H7 is the distance from the, from the origin. This is called the Hess uh, notation for planes. H7 equal to certain point at the plane dot H. P, any point on the plane. point on plane. This point should be perpendicular to the line? Point can be anything, because when you do the dot product, then the part that is uh, perpendicular disappears, so it, you get the, just the parallel part, right? So basically, you know, if you put this vector as this plus that, that part will give you that product equal zero and you will just get that, the one that is per parallel to the direc direction. And that's one way of measuring the distance. It's what is called the Hess formulation for, for, this, for you know, uh, giving equations to planes. So if you look at this, the point and the plane are dual in the sense that, you know, the components that are zero here are 
populated here and, and the opposite is true. And there's a whole you know duality between planes and points theory and all that, but we don't use planes too much so far. We may someday because we have the tools to do it. So far we use lines, points and directions. But planes are also interesting entities. These are the basic things that you can uh, write geometric entities that you can write very immediately using the Clifford algebra. Spheres, other type of entities would require equations in this Clifford algebra. There are other Clifford algebras in which a sphere is, you know, is an entity like this. It's a fundamental entity and that's called the conformal algebra. You can create a Clifford algebra for that. It's bigger than this, it's more powerful, it contains, you know, everything. <laughs> so there are some people now working, instead of using this Clifford algebra, they use the Clifford algebra of the conformal, you know, uh, space. And, you know, they claim it's better, but we are not there yet. <laughs> we use this one. So lines, directions, points and planes. So now, you, because you have the Clifford product, you can take these things, you know, find distances, find you know intersections, you can operate, move these things around because you know the, the rotations, translations are also elements of the algebra. So just doing the Clifford product of this times a translation, you will get the translated point and so on. These are the geometric entities. Let's look at the group, uh, you know, the, the transformations, right? Which are also part of the of the algebra or displacements. Displacements. So within the algebra we have a group of elements and that's a group of special displacements. So a displacement, a general displacement We talked about this the last day and it is a dual quaternion that is unit. A unit element. If it's unit, it's a displacement. Okay? So basically Q such that Q Clifford product Q conjugate equal one plus epsilon zero. If it's unit, it's a displacement. If it's a displacement, it's unit. And then we can write it, we can identify the invariance of the displacement very easily from here. Okay? It can be written as as q equal to I'm going to the vector will go here so I'm going to write the vector s cosine phi over no sorry erase 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 sine phi over 2 cosine phi over 2 plus epsilon S zero sine phi over two plus T over two cosine phi over two S and then minus T over two sine phi over two. It can be written like this. And and what uh, this means is where The line S equal to direction plus epsilon moment is the screw axis of the displacement. And then we have phi rotation angle about the screw axis, T slide along the screw axis. It, but it won't appear like this when you, you know, when you get it. It will be just a whole bunch of numbers that when you do q dot q conjugate will give you one. That means it's a general displacement.
same as when you have a 3x3 three three matrix, if you can check if it's orthogonal, then it's a rotation. You can use it as a rotation, right? Okay. Now we can do in particular, oh, let me just write it in its other, its other way with the units. Um, let me give you another way of writing it that you are going to hate because you have already enough notation, but let me just give you one more. Cosine of phi hat divided by 2 plus sine phi hat divided by 2 s. Where this cosine of phi, phi hat is a dual number. which is cosine phi over 2 minus epsilon t over 2 sine phi over 2 and then the sine of phi hat over 2 is sine phi over 2 plus epsilon t over 2 cosine phi over 2 okay these are dual numbers and of course s is this line okay so this will be like the most compact notation for having, you know, the screw axis. Oh, look at that. The screw axis and the slide and rotation about and along the axis. Okay. Now let's see how it will be a rotation, so a simplified version of it will be a rotation, so translation equals zero, a subgroup of the group of spatial displacements, let's call it R, will be equal to, we can make yes t equal zero here, and that gives us a rotation, so it will be cosine phi over two, plus sine phi over 2 s that's the, the line if you want it in components sine phi over 2 direction cosine phi over 2 plus epsilon sine phi over 2 s 0 the moment of the line 0 that's a rotation about S. Notice that in general, when we talk about a rotation, you know, if you just care about directions, then this part is enough, a, a quaternion, Hamilton's quaternion. But a rotation can happen about a line located anywhere in space, and then that rotation will create translation of points too. Okay, and that's what is taken care of by this part over here is how points translate due to where the line is placed in space that you rotate about. Okay, a rotation is this, and then a translation will be just making theta equal zero. If we make theta equal zero here, this will be one, this will be zero, we'll have this, and uh, zero, zero, right? T, zero, 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 one, plus epsilon, T over two. So if you want, let me put the magnitude outside, T over 2, uh, let me just put it in. Remember, a translation vector is not a direction, but it's a direction with a magnitude. So it will be T1 divided by 2, T2 divided by 2, T3 divided by 2, 0. Or, if you want, we can take the magnitude out, 0, 0, 0, 1, plus epsilon, let me call the the length of this vector will be t over 2 
and then we'll have just a direction s1 s2 s3 0 okay and that's the direction in which you are translated so let me just say this vector is t its direction is unit direction is s and then there is a magnitude right? rotation about an axis that is located anywhere about a line of direction s and moment s0 so now we have identified everything in this in this algebra we have geometric entities and we have elements of the group now the element of the, of the group can act on the geometric entities we can translate and rotate points directions lines planes and that's what is going to allow us to do uh, robot kinematics let me just so we have half geometric elements geometric entities and group elements acting on them We had done already some, right? But let me ask. Let's do a rotation. Let me use the rotation I have here. Rotation. A translation and a translation about the z-axis. Rotation plus translation about and along z-axis. Passing through the origin, let's say. So here is our C axis and let's say T Z Of course for that we need to identify this line. This line has Fluker coordinates 0, 0, 001 plus epsilon 000. zero zero. That simplifies our life because then we can use the invariance of the displacement too to write the coordinates of the of the dual quaternion so we'll have sine of the angle times this 0 0 sine theta divided by 2 cosine theta divided by 2 plus epsilon sine of the angle times this one which is 0 plus T divided by 2 cosine times this one. So that's 0, 0. T is the slide divided by 2 cosine theta divided by 2. And then 0. Ah, sorry. Minus T. Minus T divided by 2 sine theta divided by 2. Okay, so this is our rotation and translation about the z axis. Is this element unit? It should be, because it's a displacement. Let us check that. Tc, geometric product with the conjugate. I'm going to write it in a different way. So we have the cosine theta over 2 minus epsilon t over 2 sine theta over 2, this is the number of the first one, plus I'm going to write these as vectors uh, maybe I should just write, let me just write them as vectors 0, 0, sine theta divided by 2 plus epsilon 0, 0, t over 2 cosine theta divided by 2 this is 1, and now we have to do the product times the conjugate. This stays the same, that changes sign. Theta 
over 2 minus minus epsilon. Doing any example here becomes kind of a little bit clumsy. It's a lot of calculations. Okay. So we have. Should we do it unit wise? I don't know, whatever you guys prefer. Why don't you try unit wise? Just put here this will be k and this will be epsilon k. And just distribute and do see what you get. And I'll do it in my vector way, which is scalar times scalar minus the dot product of this times that. Okay. <coughs> Cosine squared theta over 2. That, that, that. Minus. So now we have cosine minus 2 epsilon t over 2 cosine theta over 2 sine theta over 2. I think it's faster to do it your way. Okay, and now we have to do this dot plus this dot, so this will be plus sine squared theta over 2 is this dot product and then we have this times this and this times this plus 2 uh, epsilon t over 2 cosine theta over 2 I'm still doing the scalars, okay? so it's just the beginning plus <laughs> now we have this number times this it's, it's kind of a pain so Let's see, and now it comes the vectors. Zero, zero, cosine theta over two, sine theta over two. Let me extend this a little bit. This times this. Minus, this is going to cancel, sine theta over two. This is the real part and then we have one more real part which is so this time and then the cross product of this is zero so this is all for the real part plus epsilon but I think it's easier if you do it with the units please try that so let me just write it for you with units this will be cosine theta over two one of them and you can write the other one plus sine theta over two k plus t over 2 cosine theta over 2 uh, epsilon k and minus t over 2 sine theta over 2 epsilon. This will be 1. I'm just putting these four elements with their units. And then you put the other one with the opposite signs and uh, for the one that have k and just distribute over the units and you know that k squared is minus 1, epsilon squared is 0 and so on. I'm saying because it's, it's not possible that you are following the operations that I'm doing here so it's probably easier to know what's going on if you do that. So now we have this times this so that will be minus epsilon uh, minus epsilon t over 2 oh this is a minus this time minus t over 2 cosine square theta over 2 and then this one plus t over 2 cosine square theta over 2 and then the cross product is 0 So we have here cosine square plus sine square is 1, this cancels with that. So it's 1 plus epsilon 0, and then this is 0, and this is 0. So 1 plus everything else is 0. So 1. Oh, it's unit. 
remember that the Clifford product is going to give you a whole eight dimensional element. It's not a scalar product. Okay, but if you know all the other components are zero, you only get the the unit scalar. And I'm going to give you the formula how I did this calculation. Something that you can use to calculate um, just by hand. Sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it's not. So let me just. I used formula. So you have two quaternions, right? P. Let me give them hats because then otherwise PQ and this will be equal to a scalar plus a dual scalar plus a dual vector times a dual scalar times a dual vector. And what you do is scalar times scalar PQ minus the dot product of these two dual vectors P dot Q. That gives you the scalar part. And then you do scalar times vector plus scalar times vector plus the cross product. P Q plus Q P plus P cross Q. Well, you, can, you can group all the multiplication that you have to do in this way of doing it. So if, for instance, if you have two vectors which are parallel, this part will cancel and, you know, it's... Uh, sometimes it's easier, but sometimes it will be easier to use the units and just distribute the product. Uh, and when we program, of course, we do it using, you know, just the, the, the product and distributing over the units, we don't use this. This formula is good to derive theoretical results, nothing else. So all this was to prove that this was a unit element of the algebra, which means it is a displacement, okay, as long. Now let's, let's just put some numbers for it. For, let's put easy numbers, because otherwise we, theta equal pi, that's the only one we can do. And translation equal five, for instance. So we go up here and we put those values tz, tz of pi 5, we had 0, 0, sine of pi over 2, 0, 0, 1, cosine of pi over 2, plus epsilon, Let me go up there, we had t cosine and minus t sine, 0, 0, 0, right? t cosine is, and then we have minus t over 2 sine, so minus 5 divided by 2. So that will be the, the actual rotation and translation along about and, and about the z-axis with these values. And now let's, let's operate this on some geometric entity. But you guys tell me which geometric entity you want to operate. You want to do a point, a line, a direction? A point? Let's take a point. <laughs> All right, let's take a point. Points are a little bit tricky. Let's define a point, okay? So, you know, whatever, uh, this one. Two, three, three, okay? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> 2, 3, 3 is more like here, right? Okay, so point P equal 2, 3, 3. <coughs> and then the point as a, an element of the algebra will be equal to 0, 0, 0, 1 plus epsilon 2, 3, 3, 0. Or if you want 1 plus 2, Epsilon i plus 3 epsilon j plus 3 epsilon k. Uh, 
uh, to operate point, to move point, to operate with point, we have to use the conjugation, but it turns out we have to use a different conjugation. And this is probably the, the ugliest thing of this algebra is the fact that you cannot use a single conjugation to operate everything. It's, it's really, from an aesthetics point of view, it's really unpleasant. We need to use a different conjugation. And you have those in the notes. Conjugation. <laughs> if you go to the notes, at the beginning, in the more theoretical part, in page <laughs> actions, in page 104, there are four different conjugations you can do. Okay? The first one is our typical conjugation, well, the first one. Uh, the one that is actually called here F2G is the typical conjugation in which we change the sign of the vector part and leave the scalar alone. The one we use for, for uh, points. So let me just to go with the notes, in case you look at the notes sometime, for lines and vectors, the conjugation we use is the one that I call here F2G, which is the typical in which you change the uh, What you do is you do your Q conjugate is equal to point uh, scalar minus the vector part. This is the conjugate. And then you do you know, Q, whatever entity you are transforming, P, not P because that looks like a point. Let's put L, Q conjugate, OK? For points, we use the one that is here written as F4G. Okay. In F4G, what you do is you, uh, the Q conjugate 4, if you want to call it, will be equal to minus Q. 0 plus, sorry, the other way around, q0 minus epsilon q7, q0 minus epsilon q7. So we change only the, the dual part. Plus, min minus q plus, minus q plus epsilon Q0, super zero, and I'm not sure this notation is, is very clear. Maybe I should do it. Let me just do. So if you look at the quaternions, the real quaternion will change sign in the vector, minus Q, Q0 as usual, and then we do minus epsilon Q0, Q7. This is a sub zero, that's a sub super zero. So it's like taking this conjugation and adding a minus in the dual part. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Now let's, let's use that to operate with this. Uh, and I need to open a new page, but we will go back. So. This is, what is the transformation? Let me just write. TC, why don't you guys tell me what it was? Pi, by five, uh, zeros, zero, zero, one, zero? Or zero, zero, one? Do you have the values for the transformation? Zero, zero, one, zero. Zero, zero, one, zero plus epsilon. Zero, 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 minus five divided by two. Uh, is it is this right? Hold on. 
Hold on, let me just go back to this one. So this was our transformation and we were applying pi over 2 here, so that's yeah, is 1, 0 and then 0 minus 5 divided by 2, yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. I wasn't sure I was doing it right, not that I don't trust your number. Okay, and then we had the point, and the point was uh, where's the point? Zero zero two three three zero. Okay. Two three three zero. Okay. So now the transform point displaced point P prime will be equal TZ P TZ star 4 let's do it with units this time so that way we'll get used to use everything so we have I no sorry K minus epsilon 5 over 2 right now times the point and that's 1 plus epsilon 2i plus 2 3j plus 3k and now the conjugate and we said we, we change the sign of the vector this is a plus 1 right I don't know why I have this little spot there <laughs> Okay, this is a plus one. So we'll have minus k, and then we change this one, plus 5 epsilon 5 divided by 2. That's our conjugation with the fourth conjugation. We just need to do this little product. So let's just take, it's associative, remember, you can associate 2 by 2, whichever ones you want. So let's just start with these two, and we will get k times 1 and then k epsilon i k epsilon i now let's just put it and then we will solve it plus 2 k epsilon i plus 3 k epsilon j plus 3 k epsilon k this is this times that, and now the epsilon minus epsilon 5 over 2 epsilon square will go to 0, so we have saved a lot of stuff here right? all that is 0 epsilon times epsilon and now this multiplies minus k plus epsilon 5 divided by 2 we won't do this by hand very often. We will have our mathematical programs that do this directly for us. Okay. <coughs> epsilon i is the same as i epsilon. Okay? We saw that that commutes. Which means we have ki. Ki is j. So this actually is epsilon j. k plus 2 epsilon j. This will be kj. And that's minus i, right? minus 3 epsilon i and then we have k squared equal minus 1 so minus 3 epsilon and then minus epsilon 5 over 2 minus k plus epsilon 5 divided by 2 All right, let's operate again. So kk is minus 1, and then as k squared is minus 1, with a minus is a plus 1, and then plus epsilon k, 5 over 2. Now this epsilon jk. So now you have jk. Jk is i, right? It's jk is so it's minus 2 epsilon i, right? Are we? jk is minus 1. jk, no, okay, let me see. i, j, k. jk is i. Oh. 
So we go this way. So I J is K, J K is I, K I is J. So where was I? <laughs> this one with this one, right? And then epsilon squared is zero, so nothing there. So we just need to multiply this times that. So I K is minus J, right? Plus three epsilon J. K I is, is J, so I K is minus J. Oh, but we got a, sorry, we have a minus and a minus, so this is a plus, as a minus again. Gosh, I erased everything. This was what? Epsilon J I, right? Minus three epsilon J, right? Yeah. And then zero, and then we have three So we have three, we have minus three, minus epsilon, three plus five over two, right? So this is 11, 11 over two, and then epsilon k plus, I'm not sure if it's just the num correct number. You guys are better than I am, I'm sure, too, in doing these things. Epsilon k, and then we have three plus five, so this is six plus five, 11. I think that's right. Okay, let's see. So we have this plus this. Uh, so we have, let's just put it in our way, zero, 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 one, that's good. This is good, that means we, are, we got a point when we operate a point, right? Now let's see what we get. So the i is minus 2, the j is minus 3, if I did this right, and the k is 5 over 2 plus 11 over 2. So that's 17 divided by 2. Is that, oh yeah, <laughs> 5 plus 11, 17, there we go, yeah. 16, oh, this one. 5 plus 16 by 2, right? Eight. Yes, 8, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, okay, let me just put 8. <laughs> All right, we got nice numbers. huh? Now we have to see if this is right. So let's go back to that point. Let's do it. We had a, what was the point? 2, 3, 3, right? 2, 3, 3, more or less. And then, or less over here, right? This is P initial, and then we had to, we were going to rotate pi over two and translate by five. So of course the three plus five is eight. Hey, this is right. And now we have to go from two, three, pi, so minus two, minus three. Yes, we got it, okay. So this is the final point, minus two, minus three, eight. So all these long operations just to rotate the point, right? But this, this that looks, you know, complicated but done like that, of course. It's fast if you have programmed it. Can you explain this graph again? This one? Yeah. Okay, so this is the, our initial point. It was the coordinates were two in the x, three in the y, three in the z, in the z right? So two, three, and three. So that's where I locate the point. Two, three, three. And then what we did is we translate by five along the z, so that means that it will go to eight here, right? It's three plus five, eight in the z, and then we rotate by pi over two. So that means if this is your two, three vector, when you rotate pi over two, you will end up in minus two, minus three. So your final point will be here, uh, here, p prime. And that will be minus two, minus three, eight. Okay, so we are translating and rotating this point about and along the axis. And we got the right numbers. So let me just erase all of this mess out of here, otherwise, when, if somebody watches or see, sees the notes, they will. Now I don't know what I had there. Five over three, right? Okay. So P prime. This is different. These are different. Yes. 
<coughs> all right so we have been able to operate a point should we do a line now or any other thing or a direction or a plane a line a direction let's do a direction okay let's take which direction do we want to do let's do how about the x direction or the y direction the y direction okay so let's take a direction v equal to zero one zero and now we just need to take the same where was it k minus a five over two right so now v prime translated or, or displaced direction will be i forgot again k minus a k minus epsilon 5 over 2 times this expressed in dual quaternion and remember that was v0 plus 0 0 0 0 so that means j times the conjugation and that's the normal conjugation the, the number 2 so that means that we change the, the vector and leave alone the point so minus k minus epsilon 5 over 2 this time the operation seems to be slightly easier I'm just going to do this too so I have kj oh kj is minus i minus i minus epsilon j 5 divided by 2 times minus k minus epsilon 5 divided by 2 i k so that's minus j and now we have plus epsilon i 5 divided by 2 which is this times that and now we have epsilon jk jk is plus i jk is plus i i don't like that because then i have this twice and that should cancel and then we have epsilon square so that doesn't count uh, did i do something wrong here kj is minus i epsilon j we should get a minus there I don't know what we are getting that. So are of that k minus epsilon is that the right one? Yeah, right. This is this is what. Yes. Yeah. Then we should minus k minus k plus epsilon pi by two. No, that's the that's the other conjugate. We are using the conjugate number two, which means remember in the conjugate number two, the vector stays, the, the scalar stays the same, and we change just the sign of the vector. So I don't know why it doesn't come. Minus plus. No, that's the conjugation for points. This is the conjugation. Remember that the conjugation for you leave the the scalar alone and then you change the so that the epsilon is part of the scalar, is the dual part of the scalar. Well, I don't know why I get minus j plus 10 divided by epsilon i5, right? So what we are getting when we translate this one according to this, oh, of course. Yeah, I know why. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. So we are, this is our original direction and this is um, our translation and rotation is pi over two and moving five. 
So that's what it's doing, right? Pi over, I, sorry, pi and five. So pi is going to put the direction here at minus j, and then it's going to move this line through the origin to here, okay? So if we just care about the direction, we just throw away the epsilon part, okay? And I think there is a trick for that. Basically, the direction won't be affected by the translation, but if you think of this as this, if you think of this as a line through the origin, then the line is going to translate, and it's going to go to this. And if you look at what, what you are getting as this line is 0 minus 1, 0, plus epsilon, 5, 0, 0. So this should be the cross product of 0, 1, or of this point, 0, 0, 5 cross 0, 1, 0, should give you the 5, 0, 0. In fact, I think in the notes I, I wrote a trick so that when you get that, when you operate with a direction, you kind of throw away the, the moment and, and get just a direction zero back. 5, 0, 0 or 0, 5, 0? Well, no, remember this 5, 0, 0 is equal to a point cross the direction. So this is 0, 0, 5. Oh, uh, where am I? 0, 0, 5, right? 5, 0, 0. 0, 0, 5 is the point cross 0, 1, 0. 0 minus 1, 0. And if you do that, you will get 5, 0, 0. Okay, so this is the moment. It's not directly the point on the line. It's the moment of the line that you get. So what we will do is next time we will start, next day we will start writing robot kinematics equations based on this, basically.